like how the economy right how the economy should run or something like that well today we're going to talk about foreign issues and and things that would have happened that caused the political division even more especially as far as how the united states should be involved or not involved as the case may be with britain and france so you have to pay attention really closely or you're not going to get it okay so foreign relations and you guys probably remember this from world history the french revolution starts happening in the 1780s y'all probably remember louis the 14th you know and his marie antoinette when all the peasants basically stormed the castle and she gives the famous words let them eat cake basically saying we'll do what we want to do here and we're not worried about the lower class well eventually the french revolution happens the peasants and everybody starts overthrowing these people and everybody starts getting their head chopped off y'all remember reading about that in world history guys on the guillotine like put their head down take the guillotine down chop their head off tennis court oath all that well eventually it ends with napoleon being the emperor of france because they tried democracy maximilian robespierre but eventually you know that's kind of what's going to happen well simultaneously as all of this unrest is happening in france there's a ton of uh french immigrants who start coming to the united states all right and then you have a political division that's really led by thomas jefferson who is washington's secretary of state and then as john adams as vice president and he forms the party of the democratic republicans and they are really an extension they see the french revolution as an extension of the american revolution they want democracy to work everywhere so the democratic republicans are very supportive of the french the french immigrants the french movement and so on the federalists like john adams are worried they see the kings and everyone who's in power getting their heads chopped off in france and they think it's going to happen to them all right so you have a political division over how we should handle the french revolution you also have this two problems okay france and england start fighting each other when napoleon comes into power whenever you have two world powers fighting each other it's very typical for a country like ours at the time to have to pick sides it becomes a it becomes a world war fought between uh, all of the European powers. More importantly, our economy is still based on trade with Britain. But if you remember back to the American Revolution, who helped us beat the British? The French. Okay, so we got to choose between. If we choose the British, that means we're choosing our pockets, but we're really violating our treaties with France. And if we choose to help the French that starts hurting our pocketbooks so our idea is uh the federalist at least they support britain but they're not going to get involved in anything because they don't want it to hurt our pocketbooks the democratic republicans favor that we should honor the alliance with france because they had helped us 10 years before george washington's the president and in 1793 he basically says we're neutral we have no we have no skin in the game we're not going to help the French. We're not going to help the British. Uh, we're not going to get involved in foreign alliances. The U.S. will not choose sides. We're out of this. Okay, that's what's going on. Then two treaties will happen. The first one is Jay's Treaty. Jay's Treaty is a friendly treaty between us and Britain. Pisses the French off, pisses the Democratic Republicans off. That's what you need to know about Jay's Treaty. It's between the U.S. and Britain. Then you have Pinckney's Treaty which is a dealing with Spain, which essentially then gives us control of the Mississippi River, which increases our trade. Well, who's our number one trading partner? The British, okay? So both of these things by the Federalists are seen as pro-British. Everybody with me? So now all the Democratic Republicans are mad at us. That's all fine and dandy because you still have a strong leader in Washington. Well, Washington, as you guys will study, and this is your quiz today, okay? When I test that Google form, it's all on this farewell address. So I want you guys to listen to me. His farewell address, 1796. After two terms, Washington refuses a third term. That sets a precedent for all other 
presidents other than Franklin Delano Roosevelt to follow. That presidents will only serve eight years. He writes a letter to the American public saying goodbye, but here's the two important ideas. He began to see the Democratic Republicans and the Federalists forming this two-party system, and he knows it's going to create this division within the U.S. Okay, he doesn't think there should be any partisan politics. Did Washington get his way there? No. I mean, God Almighty, the Democrats and the Republicans still are going at each other 230 years later, and our country has essentially been a two-party system from the beginning. At this point, it was the Democratic Republicans versus the Federalists. Then it became the Democratic Republicans versus the Whigs. Then it became the Whigs versus the Democrats. Then it became the Democrats versus the Republicans. We've always had a two-party system. So we didn't follow number one. And then for a long time, we did follow his idea of number two, no long-term permanent foreign alliances. Basically, we might be friendly with you, but we're not going to dive ourselves into being obligated to help you at any time. Everybody got me no permanent alliances. All right. Then, so Washington steps aside. So for the first time in American history, you got a real presidential election. I mean, Washington was elected, but nobody was not going to vote for Washington. He's the war hero. He's the big cat daddy on the block. Well, John Adams, who was his vice president, is going to run against his BFF, basically, Thomas Jefferson. This is where y'all really got to dive in with me today. Adams versus Jefferson. You got two great friends. One had been the foreign minister to Britain. One had been the foreign minister to France. And long before that, they had kind of conglomerated together to help write the Declaration of Independence. Okay, so you got two buddies. Well, Jefferson is a Democratic Republican. Adams is a Federalist. Right away, when you look at that map, right here of what's green those guys voted for jefferson so primarily in the south and in rural slash inland areas where farmers live take a look at that map you've got these people supporting the democratic republicans these are the farmers these are the scotch irish immigrants and these are the french immigrants on the coastlines and in the north like you guys can see north carolina was split all right, on cities like New Bern and Baltimore and New York City and Boston and Philadelphia, these people support Adams. Why? Because they're pro-trade. The Federalists are typically pro-cities, pro-trades. The Democratic Republicans are typically pro-farmer, all right, in the South. So immediately you see a geographic divide. When you guys look up in four Tuesdays from today, four weeks from today, we're going to vote for President of the United States. The South's going to vote primarily Republican. The North's going to vote primarily Democrat. The cities are going to vote primarily Democrat. The rural areas are going to vote primarily Republican, which is why the presidential election always comes down to purple states like North Carolina, like Florida, that have got a little bit of city and a little bit of rural. Everybody got me? It's going to come down to states like Ohio, Pennsylvania, a little bit urban, a little bit manufacturing. All right, it's going to come down to those things that we always talk about. Jefferson, back then, guys, if you finished second in the presidential election, you became the vice president. It doesn't work like that now. You run with a running mate. Okay, so you got buddies, but their election, they, they don't have the strife that they're going to end up having in 1800. So Adams will be the president. Jefferson, who's his political enemy, but is his friend, is going to serve as the VP. Why did their relationship get fractured between 1796 and 1800? That's what we're going to discuss today because Adams will only serve one term. Spoiler alert, Jefferson will beat him when they run again in 1800. You have the foreign affairs. How are they going to deal with the France issue? I, France is in revolution. France basically starts this quasi-war with everybody. If you guys remember anything, not quasi-war. They start war with everything. Sorry, they're going to have a quasi-war with America. But if you guys remember anything about Napoleon, Napoleon was willing to fight anybody, anytime, anyplace, anywhere. France is upset about Jay's treaty. I told you that was about being tight with uh, – that was tight with America and Britain. Okay, 
France also is like, hey, dude, we helped you win your own Revolutionary War in 1778. Okay, this is only 20 years before that, not even 20 years. So we think you should be helping us fight all these people. We're like, we ain't getting involved in that. Then to complicate matters, you have what is called the XYZ affair. It would be like me sending Marbell and Jorge over to be diplomats in a foreign country. And they're trying to improve relations with the United States and France. Well, when they get there, when they go meet with um, Charles Talleyrand and his French delegates, who they are referred to in the American papers as just X, Y, and Z, X, Y, and Z basically told Jorge and Marbell over here that we'll talk to you, but you got to pay us $12 million before that for us to even consider sitting down at the negotiating tables with us. Well, this story makes its way back to the American newspapers and America and Adams is pissed. I uh, basically it ruins America and French relations over the course of the following four years. But remember, Thomas Jefferson is a French sympathizer because he had been over there. I uh, and there's a bunch of French immigrants already over here. So it just divides the country right down the middle. What do you think about what's going on in France right now? Reports published and then the Federalist Papers just go hard on France at home. Americans were insulted and come home. The United States has this undeclared war with France. They do a lot of fighting in the Navy. Not a lot of people are dying. Um, we don't, we don't, everyone wants war, guys, but that ain't a battle where we can win at that point. France is one of the most powerful navies in the world, most powerful armies in the world. Adams knows if we go to war, we're going to get our butt kicked. Everybody's kind of seeing him as a weenie, but he knows he's not going to pick a battle that he can't win. Napoleon comes in charge, and he's like, dude, I'm already fighting Britain. I'm already fighting Russia. I can't be worried about what's going on across the Atlantic Ocean. So Napoleon's like, dude, we ain't messing with y'all no more. Here's the deal. In the treaty, we're not going to ask anything from you. You don't ask anything from us. Everybody good. So the French French thing should be good. But then what happens at home, and this is the big one, so you should know the XYZ affair, and you got to know the Alien and Sedition Acts. When you guys think of the term alien, y'all think of outer space, right? Somebody not of this world. Well, alien in regards to the Alien and Sedition Act is somebody not of this country an immigrant coming in here. So technically uh, a Mexican who comes across the line that doesn't have normal citizenship or a green card is an illegal alien. Y'all heard that term before online. Y'all heard it here. Well, French people who were over here at this point begin railing against all of the lack of support they've gotten over here they want to throw all their support behind Jefferson and his party. Well, if all of these people who are illegal aliens or aliens that eventually want to become citizens, citizens can vote. So if those illegal or excuse me, those legal aliens become citizens, they're going to vote Adams and all his Federalist people out of power. So what the Alien Acts basically do, the Federalist Congress and John Adams passed the Alien Acts basically saying, well, you got to really be over here for 14 or 15 years before you can vote now. Basically trying to keep themselves in power because they know if these French immigrants end up being able to vote, it's they're going to win the election. The Democratic Republicans are going to win the election. It's seen as a way to keep the Federalists in power. Well, what the Federalists are saying is, well, this is the way to keep us safe. All right, because we think that you're just going to start guillotining everybody, like what's going on in France. Then you have the Sedition Act. Everybody know what the First Amendment of the United States is? Freedom of speech, religion, press, all that stuff. Well, the Sedition Act say it was a crime to publish false or scandalous or malicious writing about the government or Federalist officials basically trying to squelch any type of opposition in writing from uh, Democratic Republicans. So basically what the Democratic Republicans basically say is you want to suppress anybody who wants to talk bad about you. 
everybody with me on the Alien and Sedition Acts, both of these are seen as violations of what amendment? The first. Everybody with me? These laws expired in 1801. While he's the vice president of the United States, Jefferson and Madison, James Madison, who we talked about, who was the father of this constitution, come up with the Virginia and Kentucky resolutions in response to the Alien and Sedition Acts. They were convinced these laws were unconstitutional, which they were. Jefferson and Madison uh, uh, basically anonymously write the Virginia and Kentucky resolutions and basically say the states have the right to nullify these unconstitutional laws that are passed by Congress. Guys, this is the very same thing. Obviously, we end up fighting the Civil War over slavery, but we also fight it over the fact that the states believe the federal government becomes too powerful when they abolish things like states' rights. The states' rights to uh, nullify the Alien and Sedition Acts, this is what's going on. So you guys should have a clue on that. Well, Adams, as a result of the Alien and Sedition Acts, becomes increasingly unpopular. Jefferson, while he was the vice president, is like, dude, I ain't staying here. I'm not staying here. He goes home to Monticello and is like, I can't be your vice president anymore because I don't agree with anything you're doing. And they're going to run against each other again. And the Alien and Sedition Acts eventually causes John Adams to lose the presidency. He beat Jefferson in 1796. Jefferson will then come back and beat Adams in 1800. Everybody with me? So that's what happens over that. Uh, it's often called the Revolution of 1800 because it proved that America could withstand a change in power and they could have a change in power peacefully. The transition from Washington to Adams was peaceful because Washington stepped away. Adams lost. He wanted to still be the president, but Jefferson beat him. Everybody got me on that? So what is the legacy on my last slide? What is the legacy of the Federalist Party? Guys, they did build an enduring political and financial foundations for the governments. Uh, he kept us out of war, Adams did, to his point where he was called a weenie. Uh, he followed Washington's precedent. We're gonna stay out of war, we're gonna be neutral, all of these things, uh, but it was so polarizing, some of these issues that came up, it did create the two-party system that even exists today. So what you need to do for the rest of the period, you need to go on Newzilla, and then that Google form that I've posted online, guys, that Google form that I've posted online is the assignment for today. It's a three-question quiz on Washington's views uh, in his farewell address that you should have got from this lecture and you can get from that article. I'm grading them. It is a quiz grade. It should be an easy 100. After that, you guys online can hop off. You guys in here, I'm going to show an episode of John Adams that talks about the Alien and Sedition Acts and all of these things. Everybody with me on what to do? All right, I'm here if I'm needed.